professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. Imagine a sudden storm hits. Um, imagine that there is a tornado um, that is close by. Imagine um, that your area suddenly has been affected by an earthquake. Hi, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, Core Faculty for the College of Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this video, um, I'll be talking about um, some of these natural disasters and how uh, best to prepare yourself um, for from uh, natural disasters uh, before uh, disaster strikes. So let's get started here. Um, a, a tool that I really want you to um, uh, explore in this is um, the National Risk Index Tool. And this is an important measure because it looks at 17 different measures um, of inclement weather. And uh, let me show you um, what I mean by that. So let's um, go down and scroll through here. So um, this tells you on the right hand side a little bit more about this. So um, I said 17, um, it's actually 18 natural hazards that are um, taken into consideration for the risk index. So here's an initial map that has been drawn. Um, and as, as you can see from the um, 18 measures, um, the coastal areas, of course, you know, um, are very much high at risk because of hurricanes. But if you look further in inland, um, there's also potential for tornadoes. And then, of course, on the California coast, um, we know about the San Andreas Fault. And um, there's other um, major fault lines. Um, so there's always um, areas and neighborhoods that have risk. But soon I'm going to show you an interactive map where you can actually change around some of the parameters and see how that um, affects the outcomes. So let's take a look at um, some of the technical documentation. So not only in this video am I showing you um, kind of an important um, indication, a geographic measure um, that varies spatially, but I'm also showing you the process of how you can go through um, government websites and maneuver through and get to the information that you're looking for. So what I'm looking for um, currently is, like, I, I, I know that there's 18 measures, but I'm trying to find out the list of 18 that are in there. So let's see if we can um, go through and find that. So um, when you go to get to the bottom, um, look for the Selection National Risk Index Technical Documentation. So then, um, as you see on the left, um, you have all of these um, sort of hazards that um, you can look at avalanches, um, coastal flooding, um, cold wave, drought, earthquake, hail. Um, but here in chapter um, 5 is the list of 17, list of 18 uh, hazard types. So including winter weather. So just um, go through this. And um, this is an example, and um, I want you to make note of spatial source data, but um, this is really an example of how um, you can get to um, understanding how the variables are operationalized. So now moving back to kind of the main screen. Remember we had um, kind of gone 
um, a little bit um, into describing and, and finding out about the 18 natural disasters. So let's look at take action, and that's on the top um, right corner. This is another um, interesting and important tool um, where it really empowers you to um, kind of assess your needs and then um, take action accordingly. So if, if you take a look here, um, for instance, um, you can take a look at, to, to decrease your community's risk, um, you first need to understand the driving forces and factors, um, and then um, plan accordingly. So if you have um, high risk, then um, there's higher expected annual loss, um, and also higher this is important, higher social vulnerability. Um, and when you have social vulnerability, um, it also is connected to the idea of resilience. So how, how resilient are you um, in, in the face of um, inclement weather or, or um, uh, turbulent um, sort of um, hurricanes and, and, and whatnot? Um, many communities are affected. Um, through uh, natural disasters. So if you want to, um, you can go ahead and um, uh, take a look at this case study of Washington County. And um, I, I um, went through this on my own, but um, didn't really um, think there was too much time in this video to go over. It's beyond the scope of this video. Um, but but uh, when you go through this particular website, please um, think of this as a tool for yourself um, that you can use to prepare for input work. So the other, um, now I'm going to end with other part, is exploring, exploring the map. Explore the map. And so um, taking a look at um, what is in our front screen and what, what we are um, taking a look at is um, actually the risk index. Um, and this is a, a map that we had already seen. Um, but we can again see kind of the level of risk um, according to um, county. Um, and you can change that to census tract as well. So um, this is a powerful tool um, already, but then um, you know you can kind of geocode and um, put in your own lo location um, and, and and see what type of risk there is. So um, I can put um, area of residence, area of my residence, and um, see that. Fortunately, there's a very low risk. Um, so, uh, but you know, there's there's always the need to uh, prepare and plan. Um, so, what's the expected annual loss? This is another good um, map to be looking at, and this will uh, this is one that um, looks at it from all natural disasters. Here, you can actually go down and. Um, look by kind of type of natural disaster and see how that changes. Um, let me first zoom out though from um, the map that we have presently available. So you can just quickly um, hit the home button. So um, this shows the expected annual loss map for um, all natural hazards, but as I said, um, if you are thinking about earthquakes, um, there's areas that are more vulnerable than others. Um, and so there's areas um, in the California region, which is San Andreas Fault, but then um, near the Rockies, in the Rockies there's faults, and then um, 
So, and um, over in Arkansas and um, Tennessee. But so, so these are all areas of uh, potential um, fallout and um, disasters um, and, and sort of damage from a lot of these natural disasters to take place. So what's the social vulnerability? That's the next um, thing, uh, variable to be looking at. Um, and um, this is the type of um, social needs that um, the population has um, within the region. Um, and um, this is not necessarily biohazard, it's um, all types. And um, you can see kind of the darker regions if we look at the legend have very high vulnerability, social vulnerability. Um, and then for the um, areas with community resilience, so if you map social vulnerability and community resilience, then um, then you get the complete picture of, say, uh, there was some sort of earthquake um, that were to affect the community, then you would see um, how resilient the community is um, and, and how they can absorb the shocks, um, but also how vulnerable, socially vulnerable, um, the population is within that local community, um, so that you can address needs and um, gaps before um, emergency hits and strikes. Um, and, and so you can kind of prepare and plan um, accordingly rather than um, waiting for until it's too late. Um, so it's critical that um, you look at some of these uh, maps and resources that I've shared with you um, and then uh, do your own um, research and um, do your own kind of, um, if there's resources that you need to gather um, to prepare um, for future disasters, uh, uh, maybe food um, that you need to uh, plan on, um, then go ahead and do so. Um, so I hope you've learned um, some key elements in this video. Thank you for listening.